Hosted Services has a major update to its lifecycle events in .NET 8. Hit the subscribe button and stay tuned as we show you what they are and how to use them. When creating a worker service project, it creates a service like this that inherits the background service abstract class. Within that class, there's an execute async abstract method that we have to override. Within that, we pass in a cancellation token, and then we do a loop around the cancellation token if the cancellation hasn't been requested. We run some logic here, and then we delay the task by a further five seconds before repeating it. This happens until the cancellation has been requested, essentially the worker service stopping. The background service implements the iHosted service. Within the iHosted service, there's two methods. There's the start async, which triggers when the application host is ready to start the service, and the stop async, which is triggered when the application host is performing a graceful shutdown. Now this is all very well and good, but it doesn't give us a lot of flexibility. But with .NET 8, we have this new iHosted lifecycle service interface that implements the iHosted service. We've already got the start async and stop async from iHosted service, but within this, we've got a couple of new methods. We've got the start in async, which is triggered before the start async, the started async, which is triggered after, then we've got a couple of stopping ones as well. We've got the stop in async, which is triggered before the stop async, and the stopped async that is triggered after the stop async. So we've got a bit more flexibility around the lifecycle events of a worker service. Now the problem we've got here is that the background service only implements the iHosted service. And as far as I know, in .NET 8, there isn't a separate abstract class for the iHosted lifecycle service. So what are we gonna do about that? We could write our own abstract class, but there's a quicker way of doing it. With our existing background service, we can implement the iHosted lifecycle service and then implement each of the methods that come within that interface. Then we can take advantage of each of the application lifecycle events in a worker service. To demonstrate this in action, we're gonna log a message for each method. For the start async method is included in the background service abstract class, so we need to override it. We log the message and return the start async from the base class. We do a similar thing for the stop async. We've also got our execute async, which gets run when the worker service has started. Let's run the application now, see if it's gonna work and what order the events are gonna fire. So we can see that the starting gets called, then the start, and then the started. We can also see that our worker service is running in the background. We've got another entry there, and we've also got another entry there. Let's go ahead and stop it. We can see that the stopping gets called, then the stop, then the stopped. So we can see that's all working for us. Watch our video next on creating a worker service if you want to know more about running background services in .NET. In addition, we'll also show you how to set up your worker service as a Windows service. The video has over 600 likes, so I'm sure you will get value from it.